get so mad, there's no control in me My thoughts get so bad, I'm like Oh God, here goes I lost all feeling from my head to my toes You said some shit that I can't let go So just stay tuned for the rest of the show Thank you so much for uh, I know the first day of, of any show is Bedlam um, And it's really good to see that it's already buzzing It's uh, currently 10, just gone 10.30am uh, At Infocom in Las Vegas um, I've got with me today Erin, uh, Adam, and Matt, and I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself. So, Erin? Absolutely. I'm Erin Marmoran from Johns Hopkins University. I'm Adam Harvey from University of Hertfordshire and LTSMG. I'm Matt North. I'm from the University of East Anglia, Norwich, and I'm also part of LTSMG. So, as you all know, um, I started a podcast around diversity, inclusivity, and equity, predominantly around issues in the AV industry. And I really wanted to speak to um, you because of your experience in higher ed and the perspectives that you will have will be different to other uh, professionals in our industry. And uh, I think the issues and, and the um, are possibly the same, uh, regardless of organization. But um, just to start off, what does diversity, inclus inclusivity and equity mean for your individual organizations? What does it look like for you? Who'd like to start? I mean, I can, I can pick that one up. Um, like, I mean, as with pretty much any university, there's always like a specific office that like that is their job to, um, you know, try to increase equity and whatnot. But I feel like there's just something missing like there I don't and I don't know if maybe it's because it's just such a broad sweep that there's it's hard to kind of narrow down specifically things that they should focus on and but because there isn't it just things just get lost and so uh it's one Thing that is nice about being a uh, part of HETMA, the Higher Education Technology Managers Alliance, and um, that we're able to um, make that one of our initiatives and specifically focus That's great. on um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so, you know, we're making it extra, like making it a point to do better and be better. And is that in relation to HETMA as an organization? What, what are the focuses for, for, so, because it's so broad. Absolutely. Is it, is it your teams? Is it the faculties? Is it the students? Well, so our main initiative currently is um, trying to um, make AV in particular more diverse. And of course, because we are higher ed, um, we're focusing on bringing in a more diverse working population. Um, so our current initiative is the uh, PRISM Scholarship, which we partnered up with Avixa to give um, out 10 scholarships to someone who identifies in a, like, as a diverse population or underserved. And so they're going to get um, a year of um, a, um, what is it? The education package from Avixa so that they can ready themselves to take the CTS Amazing. and hope that that will help anchor them into the industry more. Even if they don't stay in higher ed, hopefully they'll at least stay in, in AV. So then they'll also get, uh, they'll, they'll get a, paired up with a mentor or potentially multiple mentors in HETMA. And they're also, um, they'll get the opportunity to take the CTS exam um, and also then they'll get a trip to Infocom. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so really good. it's, um, you know, it's a small step. It's just one step, but we're hoping that by this, it's like one little drop, but it'll ripple. It will. And hopefully mm. that we can kind of keep going and offer this every year going forward and maybe even more. That's amazing. That's really good. Adam, Hertfordshire is quite a diverse part of the UK and I, I having visited the university a few times um, and knowing some of your students I know you have a diverse population 
Um, what does it look like for you and for your team? So it's kind of from a university point of view, it's similar. I mean, we have a, an EDI office that, um, you know, it's their directive to just make sure that everyone's aware. Every strategic business unit has an EDI group right. that's made up of all the staff in that particular area. And they do things that are more localized to try and, you know, just, just make sure it's more about raising awareness and just making sure that everybody is, you know, fully on board with what they need to be looking at from a university strategy point of view which is really good. Um, from an LTSMG point of view, it's, you know, we're, we're not where Hetmer is. Uh, so we're, again, it's about raising awareness for us, just trying to make sure that, you know, all of our events, everybody feels welcome, everyone's a part of it. You know, we try to introduce, you know, we had the Evictor Women's Council present at our last one. We had um, Jack Laidlaw from Mid Middlesbrough College about AV apprenticeships. So we're just trying to make sure that, you know, that message is getting through to everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was great to see. So from a, from an onlooker, so, so looking at, at it from and seeing how it's grown over the last few years and, and what you guys have done with LTSMG. I'm just so impressed with the effort that you put into your events, mm -hmm. but also that it's on the agenda and that you are mindful of it. And it isn't just because the technology is an enabler and, and we love the tech and that's that's almost a, a given but to actually have it on the agenda to say okay there might be issues around discrimination and to actually think of ways to actually move it forward was great to see from from outside yeah but, i mean we're kind of really aware because you know obviously our members are members of other organizations so you know people just join the ltsmg everybody's welcome absolutely but you know when the conference we did you know, you look at the numbers and, you know, 90% are white males, stuff like that. So, yeah. I mean, it, it's difficult because yeah. there's nothing we can actively do to encourage no. other institutions to employ. But, you know, they have their own policies on that. But, you know, for us, it's just, just to make sure that, you know, it's a group everybody feels welcome in. Mm. Mm. Matt? Yeah, so you were the host of LTSMG conference this year as well. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was fortunate enough move. to be uh, to be to be asked to host the the first one back in person, which was a, a real honour and privilege. Um, but similar to Adam, I mean, we we have a central um, EDI office as well. Um, but we, as far as I'm aware, certainly in my area within the university, we don't have that kind of EDI within the within the faculty or the school. Okay. Um, so I think. But what we do have is we do have other kind of advisory groups. So I work quite closely with a group we have called Access All Areas, who are kind of a disability advisory group to the university. Um, and they have a very big voice in decisions around big estates projects. Um, and we consult quite heavily with them to ensure that our spaces are designed and, and accessible for all. Um, but yeah, I think I think as well with LTSMG and what Adam was saying about you know, members coming through, I think one thing that I'm starting to look at now is is to bringing in new talent and new te technical teams within the university rather than just going out and you know looking at job adverts we've I'm looking at working with um, a local um, institution called access to creative um, who are kind of a college level um, population with you know a diverse population of students there um, all with different um, interests and looking at apprenticeships um to, to kind of bring people in that way as well Brilliant. um so i think that that's you know getting in and uh, at that kind of age level and making sure that people are aware of the av industry what it can do um and ensuring that everyone feels that it's accessible to them i think that's a so really key point in terms of your spaces what changes have you seen in terms of the technology and what what you're being asked to put into classrooms or lecture theaters now in, to meet the needs of your student population and also the faculty, because I'm guessing they, there must be some faculty who need additional assistance or whatever it may be. Um, anything that, that struck you as, as in the last few years that's changed a lot? I know hearing loops and that kind of thing has always been kind of there, but any, anything else? Is there anything on the technology side that you're seeing? Right. I mean, we're definitely seeing the a higher need for some sort of listening assistance okay. uh, because I mean there you know the regulations that for ADA compliance you have to have um, some sort of assistance when it's a space over a certain size okay but then for our smaller rooms where there's normally not vocal reinforcement what do we do it's not like suddenly 
an instructor is going to be like, oh, well, I can't teach here because I have a student that has, so, you know, they, they need this. And so we had to, you know, we had to get creative and, um, you know, some solutions work better than others. And so we, it's, I wish that we could just across the board in every single classroom and make everyone like the same. And so that every person who walks in a space can have like that same feeling of equity. Unfortunately, you know, we have to work with like our student services yeah. um, disability group and um, the office of uh, Inter institutional equity so that um, it, to identify specific spaces that we can like just in time get a fix for but it definitely seems like it's it's becoming more and more of a need that we will definitely have to do something in every space but getting the funding to make that happen <laughs> whole lot of different whole lot of story so just picking up on that and and i know like for, for your conference you have the manufacturers on you know as, a, as quite an active part do they are they coming to the table with anything in, in that regard of things that will make your life easier to 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 be able to do those just-in-time fixes or think, is there anything, have you heard of anything that's coming in that should manufacturers be listening and, and, and stepping up? I think for, for us, you know, the, the, the legislation in the UK has got this sort of weird, you know, reasonable adjustment that's right. clause yeah. in it. Yeah. It's really difficult. And the university's always felt that, you know, they, we shouldn't single out a particular space in a room or anything like that. So we've, from, a, well, 15 years that I've been doing the rooms or more actually, yeah, it seems like a long time. Um, so we've we've just done every space. So we're not all vocal reinforcement, but we've started to do that now. Yeah. But yeah, hearing loops have just gone into every single space in the university. Yeah. Um, things like mobile connect, we've had to use, mm -hmm. you know, quite extensively in some spaces that are difficult to do the physical installations. There is some restrictions on, you know, the technology to get that in, but you know that's proved pretty successful. Actually, we used the tour guide stuff from Williams AV. We, we did. We conference. did. So yeah. That, that, there was a load of we did a tour around UEA, the yes. it, and um, Apatronic led us some stuff from Williams AV. But there's so many comments afterwards. It was like, wow, that was really good. We could use it for X, Y, Z. So yeah. you know, just that kind of you know, getting people familiar with the stuff that's out there is sort of promoting the ideas, which is quite, it's quite nice. I think well, with with me and UEA, we aren't quite as far in that, in that journey, unfortunately. We have got, or I'm just starting to build relationships with the right people in the university, in the EDI offices, to actually assess what our designer is for our teaching spaces and actually say, you know, is this meeting the needs? You know, what's, what kind of needs do our student population have? What are the numbers around that? And how do we, you know, how do I take it forward from a post-pandemic perspective to ensure that those students who are either in room or remote are able to access everything so that's such a good point because um that that whole remote teaching has been quite something for for students and i know my son just finished his first year at university and we weren't sure whether he was going to have in person but he did have a lot more in person than the, the couple of years before which yeah. is great um but that was a challenging time um but, you know, i think mostly probably all of our universities they're all campus-based universities yeah, so yeah. our drive is to get the students yeah. back yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, the, the good lessons we've learned from COVID is that you, you don't have to be on site all the time to learn. Yeah. So the, the, the blended and flexible approach is actually benefiting a lot of people who were struggling with childcare and working and stuff like that while they're trying yeah. to support themselves. Actually, that's given them a lot more accessibility into some of the courses we're running. So we're looking at that. I mean, the university sort of vice chancellor said, right, everything blended and flexible by 2025, every programme. That doesn't mean change the technology in every room, but it just means look at what you're teaching and what needs to be done on site, what doesn't need to be on site, and how do you look at the delivery of it to change it to make it, you know, right for everybody. And that's mm -hmm. actually benefit sort of having a side effect of benefiting a lot of other things. Yeah, I can imagine. So I, I left higher ed in 2017, came back into AV, and um, I'm quite impressed that in the five years, um, the kinds of technology and, and the kind of things and the kind of access that students have now just wasn't in place when I was teaching, in, even in 2017. And uh, and you're right, that shift ha has made people a bit more creative and a bit more um, aware that actually there are other ways of, of doing things. And 
having taught, I know it's great. You want your students to be in the classroom, but actually if it does, if they're still accessing the learning, then why not? Why not make that happen for them? And I'm sure there are probably, um, I have no stats on this and I've tried to, to see if anybody's, uh, maybe it's too soon to, uh, to even gather stats, but um, whether the, in terms of disabled access, whether that's improved mm. since the pandemic, because people who thought that previously they couldn't actually get to a uh, on-site university, that they're able to access um, a university program from home um, and what that looks like and the kind of support. So it's probably early days yet to see if, if that's, but I, I'm pretty sure that, that there must be some, some gains there. Mm. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. Because I, I feel like uh, a lot of times it, large schools just they don't necessarily think about the people who have mobility issues and whatnot and these are large campuses where you know students could potentially have to go a mile or more yeah. from class to class and if you have a mobility issue it's going to cut into the amount of time and yeah. and it's just comfort level also like having to sit in a classroom um it's it's difficult and uh, I I feel like this can open up a lot more doors for students who initially may have thought that attending Johns Hopkins University is just not an option because it's just too too many hurdles to go yeah. over but I think having the flexibility that they potentially could take the same program but from the comfort of their house and I think it it definitely it's great. It'll be great to see like what the possibilities are and how open campuses might be to those kind of opportunities. Because I get all schools want people. They want the yeah. bodies in the seats. But I think if if in in a stance of like of equity, it mm. the online like approach is just it opens so many more doors. And in terms of your faculty, what what kind of issues do you do you come across with? adoption of technology and and actually so you might have that technology in place for students but if the faculty that the leader in that space isn't delivering how do you how do you manage that and how much of an influence can you have in your roles with that but we had to start uh working a lot closer with our um they recently rebranded but they were known as the center for educational resources and they were basically the go-between for the faculty to help them adjust their pedagogy and their teaching styles. And they, I mean, absolutely don't know how we could have gotten through the last couple of years without them um, because they're the ones who really put in the work with the instructors. But I felt like the minute they had the chance to go back to their old ways, <laughs> they were back to their old ways. Um, so it's been, it's been difficult to kind of get people to adopt it and keep on going. Yeah. I think very similar here at UEA, we, we, we've, you know, we've had that support team in our Center for Technology Enhanced Learning and they took the brunt of the support throughout the pandemic as well. Um, but I think, you know, as you say, our, our academics as well, some of them are falling back into the ways, the pre-pandemic ways, their, their, their old tried and tested ways, and they're trying to deliver this new flexibility that students are wanting with that old style and it's just it's just not it's just not working so i think we've you know there's a there's a big pedagogical debate about how the learning is delivered i think you know the the, the pure synchronicity of you know just having students join into a teaching room um with students in the room don't necessarily think that that model is right for everybody and certainly not right for all courses i think the the actual way that the that the learning um and the teaching is delivered needs to be reviewed and obviously that's where we come in to say what can we do within our spaces to enable that um but ultimately is i think there's a the pedagogical side that needs to be worked through for each individual faculty and the kind of topics and disciplines that they teach do you do you offer training for that or is does that fall in someone else's remit so we we, we offer training obviously within the spaces and what the what the technology within the spaces can do um and then working collaboratively and closely with our center for technology enhanced learning or ctel because we're a university of excessive acronyms uea um but um so um but yeah that we work closely with them and they you know 
now are more interested in what the spaces can do and I'm interested in the, the kind of more virtual learning environment delivery, the online delivery and what those systems can do and how we can kind of pair the two up to make sure that um, you know, we're, we're delivering the best we can for the students. Great. Thank you so much for your time today. I know it's a subject that um, I'm really glad to see that all of you uh, and your organisations are raising the awareness of. And I, I think you, you said that before, it really is about raising awareness mm -hmm. and and not assuming that it's someone else is going to do it or that, like you said, there's an office that will look after it, but actually that all of us have got a role to play and something that we can do that if it helps one person, whether that's somebody in your faculties or one of your students, they'll remember that and they'll know that that they were considered and treated as an individual. And um, that's really at the heart of, um, of why I'm doing this podcast as well. Um, so thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of, of Infopom. And um, I just want to give a, a shout out to John Green's family. Um, some of us are wearing green for, for John uh, to remember him. So it's, it's green for green Wednesday. That's the hashtag. Um, this will go out next week. So it's going to be a week late, but let, let's keep his memory alive. And um, thank you so much again. Thanks for having, thank you for having us. us. Slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up.